right now. Hallelujah. Coming to disturb you. You guys realize we we have a God that calls us friend. He doesn't shame us. He doesn't guilt us. He doesn't look down upon us, but he calls us friend. Our maker loves us that much that he looks at us as an equal, even though we're not. But he's our father, and we're supposed to praise and worship him. Give him praise and honor and glory. So do me a favor. And this song, I want to hear your voices as loud as possible. I don't sing on key. So you'll hear me. But let's worship the Lord. Amen? Because he's our friend.
warm weather. Actually, there's a nice pretty breeze out here. Um, if, you, if you get too hot, go get a water. If you're watching this online, I, I hope you're enjoying it and in, uh, in the comforts of your home. But we are here live today, so welcome. And if you're a first-time guest here today, make sure you stop at the connections table over there and get your, we have a gift for you. We want to get to know you and um, start a relationship and, and a conversation with you. So uh, if you are on Facebook, follow us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we put up our messages up there. And if you're on Facebook right now watching live, uh, do me a favor, spread this message, right? Facebook can be used for good, not just bad, right? And this is a great tool for us to uh, expand the gospel to the world, right? It's an avenue that the Lord has made for us to do that. So as I um, get ready, we, we we don't just worship the Lord with our mouths and, and, and song. It is a beautiful way, and the Bible teaches us to do that. But he also teach, the Bible also teaches us to, to give back to the Lord, to give God what is rightfully his. And we believe in tithes and offerings. And because of your faithfulness in, in this area, we're able to do ministry. We're able to go do evangelistic. We're able to do uh, food drives and stuff like that and giveaways for back to school and, and partner with other organizations to do that. So right now we're going to go into a time of giving. If you don't mind, um, there's a couple different ways to give. You can mail in to our P.O. Box 155, Maywood, Illinois. You, uh, like I said, you can mail it in. You can donate online at our PayPal account and at, from our website, uh, www.impact-church-maywood.org. It's simple. It's easy. You can set it up automatically if you want. So it's very quick and, and uh, resourceful. And then, if you're here in person today, uh, at, at, during announcements, you guys are more than welcome to get up and put your tithes and offerings in our uh, little box over there, our donation box. So, there's a Leviticus in the law the Lord gives us. It says a tithe, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to who? To the Lord. It's, and it says it's, it's holy. We, when we give something to the Lord, it becomes holy because he, he redeems it back. And that's the beauty of what Christ did for us. He redeemed us back and we, we were made holy. So as we come here today, we give ourselves to the Lord to make us holy, but our offerings become holy because we give them with an open heart not a closed heart. And that's what the Lord's looking for, a heart to give back. And he says, give back from everything that you have. And I truly believe in that principle. Whatever comes in my house, I give a tenth of it back to the Lord. It doesn't matter if it's a penny. It's hard to split up a penny, so I just give him the full penny because I find lots of pennies throughout the day. But I, whatever comes in, in my house goes out to the Lord. It clothes, food, I will give it to you if you ask. Why? Because I'm... I know God's going to bless us with more because he's a loving and blessed and a, and a, a, a 
God that just likes to give, I believe. So lift up your offerings. Father God, we, oh, we come to you with, with thanksgiving today, Lord. We come with open hearts. We come to give back to you what is yours. Thank you for the time you allow us to be on this earth, to, to govern it, to watch over it. Let us do our best to do that. Let us be good stewards of the grain, the soil, the people, the resources, Father God. Let us be good stewards of this money that comes into impact, that we're able to help the widows, the orphans, the homeless, the, the addict, the sorrow person, the humble person, the person in need, Father God. Let us just be your conduit today, Father God. And we do that through your tithes and offerings. So we ask a blessing upon the people about to give, that they get a double, triple portion of what they give, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right, you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and, and give your offerings. I'm going to go through a couple uh, announcements to quick. Uh, next week, Wednesday, this coming up Wednesday, we're starting a new Bible study, King of the Kingdom of God. I've been preaching the red letters, the, the, the teachings of Jesus, and I want to continue a Bible study about the Kingdom of God and how important it is and what it looks like and, and what, it, what we're supposed to do with that here on earth. And So that starts at 7 o'clock in person or on, fa uh, on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, wow, um, What's that called? Zoom. Thank you. On Zoom. So uh, we'll, well, I'll send out the link this week, but we'll be at the Go Big Accounting Building. Uh, COVID uh, rules apply. So if we're inside, we got to wear masks for outside because you can't sit outside out there. We, we will, um, the weather is nice enough. We will do it there too. So please come join us. It's going to be an awesome Bible study. Uh, the Lord is just speaking to me so much about the kingdom of God. So, and then um, next Sunday or next Saturday, no, two Saturdays, August 21st, excuse me, we have a food drive. So thank you, whoever gave last week to the food drive. We still could use some donations, either food, monetary, or volunteers. We need some volunteers for this one. I, uh, it's going to be a bigger one because we didn't have one last week or last month. So this is going to be a bigger uh, uh, venue for this food drive this month. So please, uh, if you have the ability to donate, well, we'd love to have either monetary or volunteer. So with that said, I have one last one. October, I'm giving this one quick now. October 29th and 30th, if you're a man in this house, we are gonna partner with Hope Church and Chicago Embassy Network in the city, and we're gonna have a we're going to have a one-day retreat for men, and you get to camp out at a beautiful campsite in Frankfurt, not far from here. The cost is only $75. You get food, you get a lodging, um, you get worship, and a great message from Pastor Hell and a couple other pastors. So uh, we, if, you, if you're interested, please come see me, and we'll get you guys registered to, to to get started with that okay i'm excited about that it's not too often you have a, a men's retreat pretty close in your own backyard and it's affordable to be able to go to so um like you said if you're interested please come see me after service um all right with that said we get to go into the message is that why we're here, right? We're here to hear God's word, right? We're here to, to read and to learn and to, and to get filled from the Holy Spirit about what Jesus teaches. And if, if you don't do it at home, this is the only place that you come to, well, then I, 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 I love that, but we need to be in the word too, right? At home and in our daily lives. And, you know, we live in an upside down world. If, would you agree with me? We're going to be talking about the Beatitudes today and see a big part of Jesus, Jesus' teachings, he turns the world upside down. We think one way and Jesus teaches us something else. That's what we're going to look at today. The world teaches the one thing, but shows Jesus shows us another way. He shows us how to be blessed in life throughout, through the Beatitudes. He teaches us how to be able to live in happiness through the Beatitudes. He gives us instructions on how to pursue this happiness through the, our attitudes. And I don't know if you guys know, but that word Beatitude itself, it means supreme blessedness. 
supreme. Who has ever gone to Taco Bell and got a supreme burrito? Did, did you, did, did, was that you? <laughs> this is better than that. It's supreme blessedness. So we can get have everything and anything on this blessedness. And it, it means happiness and blissful. And we get this word beatitude from the Latin word beatitudo. And that means blessedness or blessed are. So when we read them, they say God blesses, meaning we have the supreme blessing that he wants to give you. Are you willing to accept it? Are you willing to take this blessing? And and and. and what it really should be called is be our attitudes because these blessings should be our attitudes as we live a life for Christ. Amen? Our attitude should be this state of happiness, a state of well-being, a state of divine joy and perfect bliss and happiness. But even more than that, what Jesus teaches us throughout these lessons is to be blessed, that we're blessed by God. It implies that the fortunate are the ones that are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. They have this blessing upon them. And the beatitude, but here's the thing. The beatitudes don't, <laughs> don't promise pleasure. They don't promise laughter. They don't promise earthly prosperity. That's not what they bless us about. Being blessed by God means the experience of hope and joy we have in our lives. The, the, the being blessed by God means the independence of outward circumstances, meaning it doesn't matter what's happening around me, I'm always blessed by God, amen? And it's not what's happening. To find, and, and, and we need to find hope through this and joy, the deepest happiness, the deepest form of happiness, and the only way we get that is by following Jesus Christ. Would you agree with me? Come on now. The Buddhists call this nirvana. And, and, it, and this is what Jesus wants us to live in. A state of happiness and blessedness. And, and to live in this state of blessing is, like you said, a state of happiness. And he wants us, Jesus wants us to live in this shalom, this peace, knowing that there's going to be trouble around us, but we still can have this peace in him. Amen. He wants us to live better, he, and yet he teaches us not just how to live on this, on this earth this way, but more importantly, he's teaching us what heaven's going to look like, what heaven is going to look like. And uh, I don't know if you guys, there's eight or nine people. I count nine Beatitudes as I read this. Some people count eight. Some people count ten. So today we're, we are, we're going to go through the Beatitudes. So if you have your Bible, Open it up to Matthew chapter 5. And as we go through this, I'm not going to go through all of them today. And I'm reading from the NLT. I like it. It uses simpler words for people. And um, it's just kind of words that we talk at. Um, or at least Pastor Anthony does. <laughs> um, and we're going to break this up into two parts. Part one today and part two next week. So we're going to go through half of them today, about four of them today. And then next week, we're going to talk and end on the salt and light, too. So, before we get started, Father God, I just lift up your name one more time, Lord. This is your service. These are your people. These are you, This is your church, Lord. We call ourselves impact, and I'm impact, meaning you are the head of this church, Lord. Do as you please here today, Father God. We ask that your Holy Spirit falls upon us. We ask that the people driving past listen and hear your word for maybe one, one second, two seconds, Lord. But because of those words, it, it peaks their ears, Father God. It starts a transformation in their heart, maybe. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit just guide us and lead us through this service to give you all the praise and glory. Amen? Amen? And it's so, Jesus is about to speak, and, and it says, one day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up to the mountainside. And this is why I love preaching outside, because this is where Jesus did it. He did it on mountainsides. He did it in lakes. And he did it in, in backyards, and it's just, I love it. And he says, and he sat down, and his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. And the first thing he teaches them, it says, in verse 3, God blesses those who are poor. And realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn. 
for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who, who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are, who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when, you when people mock you, persecute you, lie about you, and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Verse 13 says, and this is not the end of, this is the continuation of, of the Beatitudes. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it saltier again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. 14 says, you are the light of the world, light like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one likes a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. If it's in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Father and lead. Amen? Amen. Man, this is such a beautiful, beautiful teaching from Jesus. And, and I... I you know, and he's teaching his disciples at first, which we'll get to in a second. As the crowds were, they're gathering, right? And, and, and they're coming up to the mountainside. Instead of just teaching everybody, he grabs his disciples first, the people closest to him and says, come here, I want to talk to you guys. There's something happening and, I, and you need to know about it before anybody else. And he grabs them. And in these teachings, Jesus proclaims the act toward toward uh, the law to his disciples and what he what and and he, he just do that he proclaims what he's teaching about his position about authority about money that they're not important in this world to the kingdom of God that this world looks at that stuff position and authority and money but what really matters, and this is what Jesus is trying to teach him, is that it's the heart level that matters. That's what God is looking at. Your heart and the faithfulness and obedience that we give to him. And see, this message, it challenged the leaders at him. And he called them back to the message of what the Old Testament prophecies were, were teaching. The Old Testament prophets were teaching. Jesus taught that you, you need to be heartfelt and obedience its more important than the legalistic ramifications and observations of the law. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the different, I, I know we're, I've been teaching from Jesus, just teach Jesus' words, but Jesus' words came from somewhere. And, if, and, and the word says that the, the, the prophets, the Psalms, they were written about Jesus. And so we're going to take a close look at today. What Jesus said, what the Old Testament said, what the worldview says, and what the New Testament teaches us, and how it all co co coexists with what Christ says. Amen? That's teaching, understanding what the Word of God says. So before the crowds gathered, he grabs them, he pulls them together, and he's kind of like you guys right now. You're all grabbed together right here, and I get the opportunity to speak to you, right? And this is what's happening with Jesus, and, and pastor buyers are probably happening with Jesus, right? Why? Because they're on a mountaintop, and, 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 and so he grabs them. And what he starts to do is he starts to warn them about temptations, the temptations that they're going to face in, in this life. That's, and, that's, and, and first off, so what he does is, Think about it. His disciples at that time are sitting with Jesus, who is very prestigious, a very well-known man at this point, right? So because of that, they're hanging with the popular man of the day. I'm not that popular. So you guys are hanging with somebody, but I'm not that popular, 
right? But they're hanging with somebody that people knew from towns to towns. The word's getting out there about Jesus that people are just coming to the mountainside now. And what? And this is what's important. They could have, what he wants to teach them is, hey, yeah, you hanging with me, but don't think you're that important. Don't let pride get in the way. Don't be possessive. So he teaches, what he starts to do is to teach them how to avoid the traps of this world and turn them upside down because that's what's going to happen. And the first thing he teaches them is, not, is the, first, the first beatitude, realize the need of God. That's the first one, realize the need for God. And that's what it says in verse 3. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So he was teaching them, guys, you need God. You need the maker. You need to come back. Does that mean we're supposed to be poor literally in everyday lives? Does that mean I go around and I, I just throw my money away, just blow it? That's not what he's talking about here. He's not talking about poor money. He's talking about people's hearts, their spirits, that we get down and out at times. And that's what, and, 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 that, and how to get that back is to seek his kingdom first, like I talked like last week about, seeking his kingdom first and all these others things will follow, amen? In the Old Testament, what Isaiah the prophet said, he said, a high and lofty one who lives in eternity, who do you think that is? Who do you think that's a reference to? Jesus. The Holy One says, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those who repent, who have repentant hearts. I love that. I live in the high and holy place with those spirits that are contrite and humble, that have repented. These are the people in this world that right now they see gloom and doom and don't have much to live for. And that, and but that's who Christ is looking for to give them hope because there is hope. There's hope of a better place. There's hope of to be with Him in heaven. To have come into heaven, come down on this earth and be a part of that right now. That when we get there, we can call it our own. But the worldly view. How, what, what happens with the worldly view, uh, we put our pride and our own personal independence first. Then we think we should be getting blessed. That, you know, first then the blessing, the happiness that comes from God to us, but we need God. But when we need God, he's not there. Let me explain what I mean by that. So how many people have you met that are, they call themselves self-made millionaires or self-made man or woman, and they walk very pridefully and, and very high and mighty, right? You've seen people like that, right? This is, this is what Jesus is talking about, that they're doing it on their own, and eventually their spirit's going to get broke. How do I know? Because that was me. I've walked that road, and it, and it was ugly. And at this time... So they live this life for themselves, basically, right? And, and, and I talked about the Buddhists call that nirvana, and that's what it is, that they do it on their own. There are certain steps to reach this blessedness. But what the thing they left out is they're never going to reach that blessedness because they don't know our true maker. They don't know how much the God of the world loves them. See, they believe we can achieve everything on our own, but we need to realize, this is what Jesus is teaching, we need to realize that we can't do this on our own. But the only way we can do it is through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen? It's God's, God's reward for us. When we, it's just, when we put our dependence in the Lord, the, the promise, the blessedness we get is we can have the kingdom of heaven in sense. We can have it. It's ours. It's for the taking. And how do we develop this attitude? Because that's what it is. it's an attitude every day to live this way. Yeah, I can't do things on my on my own. My my spirit's not poor, but I know maybe it's not poor. Maybe maybe you're not in that place. Like oh, I'm just sad, depressed, whatever. But you know, 
You can't do it on your own. So how do you keep building this attitude on a daily basis? Hey, do you guys mind? There's two little kids. If somebody walks them over to the, if they want to, if they want to go. Okay, a little bit. Okay. Okay, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want them to miss out on that. They're having some fun over there. Um, and actually, you can go get my daughter, Abby, please. Um, how do we develop this attitude, though? This attitude of relying on the Lord. Well, in Proverbs, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to who? To the humble. He gives grace to the humble. In James, I love what James said, guys. So, and James is who? Christ's brother. So humble yourself before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. See, when our attitude is focused on Christ, focused on our maker, and we take the worldview out of it, we get the kingdom of heaven. But when we're divided and we live, this is the line and I live one, one step over here and one step here, my spirit is divided, isn't it? I'm always getting tugged by both sides. You either got to make a decision in your life and what point in your life saying, I'm not going to live for the world views. I'm going to live for God's views and the blessings that come with God. And if that means that my spirit has to get broken a little and I have to become humble and I have to submit, well, that's what I have to do. But if I live over here, I have a different outcome. I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to go to a place called hell. And again, we're going to talk about that because Jesus talks a lot about it, right? But he's right now we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. And part of it is you can own it instead of renting it. When we live like this, we're renting our salvation, I believe. Because I'm not sure if I really want to follow because I have these desires in my life. Does that make sense? Blessed are the poor in spirit, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Number two is more. It says, blessed, God blesses, they're blessed. Yeah, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This morning, my friend JJ over at Hope Church in, in Midway, where I grew up, posted, um, how do I get to it? Um, a post that broke my heart this morning. And let me for you. Where'd it go? Abby, just wait right there, please. Or, Let me, let me find it. So, last night in the city of Chicago, our neighboring town, 45 people were shot. Four fatally, including a police officer. That was in one night. There were mass shootings in Grissom where two police officers were shot. Like I said, one fatal in West Inglewood. So far this month, how many days are we into this month? Eight days. 155 people have been shot. 23 fatally. Do you think people are mourning right now? We have friends in this neighborhood that have been <clears throat> uh, shot and killed because of gang violence, because of drugs, we just, well, a friend of ours, we had to bury last week because of this. See, in a world, this world has many, many things to mourn about. Like I just said, death, illnesses, shootings, racism, hatred towards one another. We, but we have to remember that these are the weaknesses of a fallen world. I want to take a moment right now, and I want to pray for the city of Chicago. And I offered this to uh, anybody in the church that wanted to pray and I'm blessed because my little girl said she wanted to come pray for us and pray for the city of Chicago. So come here, baby. You want to pray? All right, it's your turn. Please let everybody stop killing everybody and let them 
um, let them find God in their soul and let them stop killing and stop gunshotting and stuff like that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, baby. You can go play again. That's awesome. Jesus says, bring the children to me, doesn't he? And have faith like a child. She's five. She doesn't know what the world has yet. She sees what the parents teach us, right? What we as adults teach them. And she sees God and she realizes that he's more powerful than this world. She realizes that she can put a faith in a loving God, right? But there is mourning happening. There is sadness happening. But when we take a step back, when we take this take a look at God's, when we take a look at God's heart, we realize that it means more than just mourning for the things that we mourn over. But it, we also have to mourn what God mourns about. Because God mourns about unfaithfulness, immorality, doesn't he? Cruelty that are all rampant in this world. So if, if we have to have the same will as Christ, and that these are the things that he mourns about. In the Old Testament, Isaiah again writes, the spirit, I love this passage. When the Lord called me to Maywood and to be a pastor, this is the passage that he threw at me and I, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And then when I realized that Christ said these same words, I knew my calling in life. It said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord was upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. That's our job to tell people. There's people mourning out there from sicknesses and death and, and drugs and alcohol, and they're mourning. Their souls, their spirits are broken and they're poor. And our job is to tell them that the Lord's favor has come because without Christ, I can't say that, but he came. And we are conduits today. We are his vessels now because you are a believer. So go tell somebody about it. Give them that hope to not mourn. Console them. Listen to them. Because God's anger, it says, is against their enemies. There's hope there. They don't have to fight the battle themselves. But the worldview says we can achieve happiness at whatever cost. And that's what it teaches us. Go do whatever you want. Go lie, cheat, steal. Go murder if you have to to be happy. As long as it benefits me, myself, and I, and it makes you happy, go do it. And tell me I'm wrong if that's not what you see out there. Come on. I see it daily, don't we? But Jesus tells us to pro proclaim it. Proclaim to the ones that mourn that God's favor is upon them. His anger is against their enemies. It's not against you. It's against your enemies. And that promise should be comforting to us knowing that our God loves us and his favor falls upon us. And that's the re reward we get from it. That's the blessing. We get comfort in our Lord, from our Lord. How many of you need to be comforted today? Right? I know that feeling. Well, how do I develop this attitude throughout my whole life? I'm not going to read it, but I want you to go home today and read Psalm 51. It's a little too long to read here right, today. We're outside. It's hot. <laughs> but it's a great, honestly, go home and read it. Because this gets your mind thinking. It gets your heart in the right place. It gets your soul stirred about how God looks at you and loves you. But in James, again, Jesus' brother says, let there be terrors for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness and instead, and let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. That sounds depressing, don't it? But there's a but. There's that but again from last week, right? We were talking about there's always a but. And it says, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Meaning it's not I can do everything. It's God can move mountains. And when I humble myself, he's going to honor me. That means in business, I don't have to be pushy and, 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 and in 
even in life, and to get my way, I shouldn't be, I should be humbling myself. I should be doing it with an open heart. I should be serving instead of demanding. And when I'm humble and I give the Lord glory for it and I do it his way biblically, he's going to honor me because I'm honoring him with my body. I'm honoring him with my attitude. I'm honoring him with how I portray myself. Amen. And that leads us to number three. The third attitude that should be our attitude is humbleness. To be humble. This is God blesses those who are humble. Some translations say meek. For they will inherit the whole earth. When you hear that word humble or meek, what's the, somebody yell out if you want. What's the first thought in your head when you hear humble or meek? What's like the first description of that word? What? I can't hear you because of the car. Get some. Oh, gentle. <laughs> okay. I'm like, get some. Get some what? Gentle. For me, it's weak. Because I grew up kind of rough. I thought if I pushed my way through stuff and I did things my way and not anybody else's way, yeah, I, I was kind of a bully. I wasn't humble. I wanted, I, you know, I wanted the spotlight all the time. And this is exactly the opposite. So I, when I hear these words, I think of weakness. But that's not what God's telling us. That's not what Jesus is teaching us. This is not the case in the kingdom of heaven. It's the opposite. It means that our attitude, this attitude that we should be living by, is submissive to God's will. I never understood the, 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 the word submissive. I thought if I submitted to somebody, I was weak, and that meant they were going to take advantage of me, and I, you know, people are going to walk all over me. And that is just such not the truth. Because when I humble myself, God honors me. Am I living for the world or am I living for God? And that means if the Lord, if people take advantage of you because you're humble and you're nice and you're meek, so be it. You know why? Because God's going to honor me for that. And I have a place in heaven that I'm never going to, that's never going to happen to me again. I'm going to be sitting with him blessed in happiness. And I can have that right now if I change my attitude. Right? Jesus said that the first will be last and the last will be first. He was teaching us about humbleness. Submit to people. It's okay. It happens in life. And when it does, I will honor you. And that means that our power-driven world, and that's the world view, if you're taking notes, power-driven world is the world view. And, and, they, and it's, again, me, myself, and I, and I'm going to get whatever I want, whenever I want it, and however I want it. But God's view is a servant's heart, a humble attitude, meaning it's not about us, but it's about God's will and putting him first in everything we do, amen? And our reward, I love it, another reward, another blessing, is that when we put others first in our lives and we humble ourselves, we inherit the earth. So the goals and dreams, and I, I truly believe the goals and dreams in your heart, if you live life a certain way, the Lord is going to give you your desires. He's not just going to give you your needs, but he's going to honor you because you're living a certain way. And it might not be tomorrow. It might not be a month from now. It might be five years, 10 years, but you, he's going to honor you with the earth. He's going to honor you with your needs. And, I mean, excuse me, with your wants and the dreams that he's put in you. Because they come from him and those desires. So how do we keep developing this attitude throughout the day as we live life? Well, give them our burdens. Jesus said in Matthew 11, he says, Then Jesus said to me, or said, Come to me, all who are what? Weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. He says, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble. He says, I'm humble. And I'm gentle at heart. That's our attitude. Humble and gentleness. And you will find rest in your souls. So how do you get rest in your soul? 
you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're like ah, all anxious and worried? And he just told you, humble yourself. Give me your burden. I have a I have a heart. It's not heavy. It's not it's not heavy on you. Give it to me and it'll be gone. And now you don't need to be anxious anymore. Now you don't need to worry anymore. Who likes that? Who who likes living in anxiety and depression and right? Mental health and here it is. Here it is. And I will the burden I give is light. Amen. Number four, our last one. Hunger and thirst for justice. It says in verse six, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Isaiah writes again in the Old Testament, chapter 11, verse four, he will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. If that's all you ever read, think about what it just said and what Jesus did for us on the cross. He gave justice to the poor and what Jesus is teaching. So when you hear God blesses those who are poor, where do you think that came from? It came from God speaking to Isaiah and God, and, and I talked about this months ago that Jesus saw what the father did and, and, and he only saw what the father did so he can only do what the father does because, right? And this is what the father told Isaiah and, and it's proclaimed about Jesus. So guess who can do it? Our, our savior. And it says, uh, he gave justice to the poor and make fair decisions from the exploited. The earth will shake. What happened on the third day in the grave? The earth shook and the tomb was empty, wasn't it? And it says, by the force of his word and one breath came from his mouth and will destroy the wicked, which is the end of time. When the Lord wants and it's his timing, all this wickedness that we're talking about will not be with us. Amen to that? No more mourning, no more sadness, no more tears. See, the foundation, foundational requirement for godly living is the hunger and thirst for righteousness. And this is what Jesus is teaching us and Isaiah was, was talking about our Savior. And we see this all through the, from Moses to the psalm writers and to Paul. If you want to, yeah, if you, if you want to come stream, you're more than welcome to. Um, the spirit, see, the spiritual, con, uh, spiritual condition of Christians all throughout their lives, it has to depend on this hunger and this thirst. What am I hungry, hungry and thirsty for? Well, for one, the presence of God in your life. Uh, you should be hungry and, and be thirsty for the presence of God in your life, for the word of God in your life. You should be hungry and thirsty for the interaction of friendship of Christ with you. You should be hungry and thirsty for the companionship and guidance uh, of an influence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You should be hungry and thirsty for the righteousness that comes from God into us. You should be hungry and thirsty for God's power in your life. And lastly, you should be hungry and thirsty for the return of Christ when he calls uh, his, his chosen people to be with him in heaven, amen? But when we hinder on this and we put the worldly views first by feeding it the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth and lust for life's pleasures and failure to trust Christ and remaining in that right relationship with them. That's the worldly view. When we keep feeding the flames of sin. But when we realize and we have this attitude of satisfaction, of attitude of gratitude in everything that we have, then we can have this peace and happiness that comes from the Lord. Amen? Paul writes, this is, Paul writes and tells us how to develop this attitude. So how do we develop this attitude? And I'm going to close with this verse. It's kind of, it's not long, but it's, and I'm going to talk about it. Philippians 3, verse 7 through 11. And it echoes, it echoes what Christ is teaching right here. He said, I once thought that these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. He valued what people thought about him. He valued the law to the point that he was done. He was a 
basically a murderer. I mean, he was he was killing the early church, right? He was having people uh, assassinated, basically. He valued what the world had for him. And he says, once I thought that these were valuable, but now I consider them worthless. Why? Because Christ, what Christ did for me. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ is my Lord. He had that aha moment on the way to Damascus in the middle of desert road and he struck him down and said, what are you doing? And he says, Lord, I'm yours. And he has this relationship, starts this relationship. He has this spiritual Holy Spirit moment when the Lord grabs a hold of his heart and he realizes everything that he was taught about law was about law, not about relationship. And it was about not love. It was about doing stuff in a certain way to live for righteousness. And that's not what Christ wanted. He wants your heart. And this is what he tells Paul saying, everything is worthless. For his sake, I have dis discarded everything else. Counting it all as garbage. I can gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I became righteous through who? Through faith in, in Jesus Christ. It says, for God's ways, God, for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Ah. Uh, he says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death so that no one or uh, anyone else that, so that not one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Let me read that again because I messed it up. I want to suffer with him, he says, sharing in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Paul realized that what Jesus was teaching was from God. It wasn't about the law, like I said. It wasn't about uh, doing what, right and wrong. It was about doing God's will and having a heart that loved him. Having a maker that cared enough for him that he sent his son. And he said, if I can't have this relationship with him, I, can't, I don't need anything else. Everything else is garbage. I need Christ. And the only way I can get become righteousness is having faith in Christ. And if I don't have this faith in Christ, what am I putting my faith in the world? I already seen what that's done. I see the way we treat each other. Me and Anna were talking about she's reading the Bible uh, from front to, to, to finish. And it's, it's her first time doing that, right? And she, she's in... Uh, Second Kings, and we we're talking about how how they didn't learn from their mistakes, and we see that now that we're still living in this. We could be living with heaven on earth if we put our faith in the Maker, but not just putting our faith, not then being that conduit, being that those people that go and be salt and light to the world, which we're going to talk more about next week. But it's having that faith in Jesus Christ. It's having that faith in God, that in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. It's having that faith to say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I need your blessings. I mourn. I suffer. I'm heart. I'm heartbroken. But I need you. If that's you today, and you suffer, and you mourn, and you have, uh, a, a, you need to humble yourself. And you need to find Christ in that, and to come to Christ because you don't have that faith in him. You don't have him as your savior. You don't have him as, as your maker. That's you today. Don't be ashamed of that. Be proud of that and say, that's me. Lord, that's me. I need you. I'm tired of living for my, myself. I'm tired of, of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of drinking. I'm tired of doing drugs. I'm tired of not having a dime to. 
Lord, I need you. If that's you today and you're watching on, on, online or you're here in person, please raise your hand, wink at me, however you get my attention. Because God loves you. If he didn't, he wouldn't have made you. And he sure the heck wouldn't have sent his son to die on a cross for you, to take your sins and to humble himself and to come down in, in human form with flesh and blood and bleed like us and worry like us and, and have the same emotions as us. But he did send him and he sent him for you and he sent him for you and you and you and these people driving past me. So let's pray a prayer. This prayer doesn't, <laughs> the prayer doesn't get you into heaven. It's putting your faith in the Lord. And the prayer helps to say, hey, you know what, Lord? I really do want to change your heart. I want your Holy Spirit to change me from the inside out. I want your will to be my, my will. So it's done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? So Father God, drop your heads, bow your heads. Father, meet with me if you want. Father God, I am a sinner. And I give you my sins today. I ask that you wash me clean. I ask that these blessings, these beatitudes, become my attitudes so I can go bless others, Father God. I ask that you pour your Holy Spirit into my heart, my soul, my spirit, my mind so I can do your will, your ways, and have heaven on earth. Lord, we love you. Thank you for accepting me as your child. I want to live the rest of my days with you. And we all said amen. Amen? I thank you guys for being here today. We are... Uh, next week, if it's like this again, we'll be outside, okay? Um, but the Lord loves you. He truly does. It might not look like it with what you going maybe going on in your life but struggles are not a bad thing you can learn from them and as you learn from them go teach that to somebody else because somebody else is struggling just the way you were and that might be why you're going through what you're going through so you can be an example to somebody that needs to hear it amen so remember we have a saying here be a b a b b a blessing okay god bless you guys have a great week if you need anything let me know